Okay, thanks for uh, doing this interview with me. I really appreciate it. Um, there's many doc uh, videos of you in English, but I mean in Portuguese, but not so many in English. So I think some of the people will enjoy listening to what you say. Um, so what is your main goal in Plantarum? Well, it is a dream. Plantarum is an old dream. You know, most of the botanists usually uh, as an ultimate uh, goal is to have a space where they can uh, grow plants and, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, nice plants. And uh, I have been studying plants for the last 40 years, at, uh, mm -hmm. making expeditions, botanical expeditions to all over the country, collecting plants. They always wanted to have a space for growing those nice stuff that we uh, find along along the trip. So that's. Fortunately, well, fortunately, this goal only happened 20 years ago when I was able to buy this piece of land here in this town of Nova Odessa uh, and start planting our nice stuff that we find on the on the on the trips. So I think uh, that's basic uh, goal. In fact, I wanted to leave this for the future generations as a, a legacy for the people that like plants and right. mainly for conservation because as you know Brazilian flora is very much threatened for by the agricultural expansion and everything so it's just a little drop of uh, in an ocean uh, but you know we are happy that we are able to do this so far and how many years have we been working on the botanical garden here well, right here we bought the land in, in 19 years ago, but of course I, I work with plants for more than 40 years and uh, I think it, uh, we are fairly successful because we were able to uh, open to the public uh, uh, six years ago, we opened this place for the public and uh, of course the reception is not really as we expected because botanical gardens are not really uh, an issue in Brazil. There are almost no botanical gardens in this country, except some public spaces very poorly treated or curated. And I decided to build something uh, at the European standards for the public, for the Brazilian public. And uh, we are, as I told you, successful in establishing uh, this, this park. But of course, public are not really very much receptive to the to the uh, to the area because as I told you it's not really a tradition of mm -hmm. the Brazilian. So I get the impression that maybe you were a little bit disappointed by the reaction from the public. Well, uh, in fact, I never built this for the for uh, for the visitors. In fact, I always built for me because it was an old dream. I wanted to have uh, a place where I could grow my nice, interesting plants. I, I even. Uh, live inside of the garden. So for me it's right. perfect. I, I, I can't complain. But uh, I was expecting when I opened the garden that we'd have much more reception. Uh, reception you mean like more people coming? More people coming, um, uh, more people uh, loving this place and uh, as I told you it's not really a, a tradition in this country. Uh, we are doing a lot of work on, on uh, uh, environmental education with the kids and this is changing of course. But for the, the, the adult population of course it's not really uh, uh, something that you really like to, to see you know? right so do you advertise to try to get more people to come or not in fact we have a, a very much acceptance uh, from the media the t t t t television media uh, most of the big uh, Brazilian networks came to this place to make some uh, uh, free or uh, uh, messages I mean, to the, showing the, 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 the gardens to the public in many programs. You know, almost every day we have something uh, going on on the media uh, about the garden. But even though it doesn't um, change very much the, 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 the consciousness of the people in order to visit. We, we received like uh, uh, today 35,000 people every year. Eh? Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's not much because if you, if you divide this for on a daily basis, it's like a, almost nothing so uh, right I think it could could have uh, more people coming here but uh, right is there a, 
anything that you specialize or focus on in terms of groups of plants or plants that you like or how do you choose like which plants you plant and which ones you don't? Okay, since in the beginning I was really much concerned about the Brazilian flora because uh, in this country it's a, it's a cultural thing. Uh, the people don't like it, uh, anything that's Brazilian. In fact, they like, they love to grow plants introduced. So I, I was, uh, uh, since the beginning, decided that I would like to uh, create this place with the Brazilian flora. So that's the main, the main uh, subject of our, uh, uh, of our collection. Of course, we have almost over 4,000 species now, today. And um, uh, the palm group is one of the most important. We have virtually all Brazilian species, uh, palm species. We have 305 species. So. We have everything that is, uh, is known from science from the Brazilian territory uh, in terms of palms. Of course, we have the aroids, is almost a complete collection, uh, more than five, uh, 500 species. Uh, the passiflora, the begonians, the bignoniaceae, the, um, some other groups. Um, oh, we have a large, uh, more than 1,000 uh, tree species, of Brazilian tree species. So we have only uh, among foreign flora, flora, we have only on palms. We have 200 species of uh, foreign introduced palms. Other than that, we almost have nothing of, uh, of, uh, of introduced species. We are basically Brazilian species. We have in, in this country 35,000 uh, superior plants. So 4,000 is almost mm -hmm. nothing compared, in, compared to. What, what about fruit trees? I know a lot of the people watching this video are, are uh, crazy about fruits. And do you have a lot of fruit species in here? Yeah, uh, uh, it's for us, all uh, plants produce fruits. Uh, so we never, uh, uh, never concentrated specifically on fruit, but of course we have everything that's available in Brazil in terms of, of uh, fruit trees. We have a here, it's, it's some, in fact, some introduced ones. But, but basically, Brazilian flora, Brazilian f fruit species. Mm. We, we, but uh, as I told you, we, we, we never look for specific fruit tree. In fact, we have right. Brazilian flora. But right. as I told you, among the, the fruit species, three, uh, we have all of them here, almost all of them. You know, the, the ones that are available, uh, known from science, and they're all available for, for uh, getting them. Because as you know, Amazon and many some uh, uh, biomas are very poorly known, and you don't know exactly what, what's in there. But most of the, what is known from science we have over here. But they are not concentrated in a, in a thematic garden, like a fruit tree garden, no. They are spread all over, because for us, all are tree plants. Do you personally have a favorite fruit? Or fruits that you really like? Yeah, well, I, I, I'm, I'm a specific uh, uh, adept of, uh, of collecting uh, Myrtaceae family, fruit from the Myrtaceae family. We have probably more than 300 species here. Uh, Myrtaceae. Yeah. The Myrtaceae family. The Jaboticaba Myrtaceae. family. Yeah, not just Jaboticaba, but uh, all yeah, of the Eugenia. That all family. The we are always increasing. We are all looking for new uh, Myrtaceae species. Of course, mm -hmm. even though we don't have much space for additional species, we have only 10 hectares in it, uh, but we are still looking for, for uh, the Myrtaceae family. Mm -hmm. and the other groups, of course, the Sapotaceae are a large group, we have uh, quite a bit of species here too, uh, among the trees, uh, the fruit trees. Uh, but uh, as I told you, we, we, we don't focus on, on, a, on a specific fruit tree uh, group, but uh, as I told you, we have most of them Brazilian, assisted Brazilian species. Right. Um, I heard about two years ago that you were going to make a book specializing just in all the Brazilian fruits species, only Bra native Brazilian fruits, but this book never came out. I, what happened to this book idea? No, in fact, we did. We did. In fact, they are, they are, they are together with the introduced the species. Yeah? The right. last book on Brazilian fr fruit. Right. On Brazilian uh, uh, fruit in Brazil. The last one that we put out. Was fruit doesn't know Brazil. But after that book, I heard you were going to do a book just on Brazilian no. fruits, what, what including all we... the Amazonian fruits, because this book that no, you. I, I think the, the, this, this collection is, it, it covers most of them. In fact, 
what we did, we, we printed only one edition in Portuguese. Now it's going to put out a, a, an English edition uh, in an a, a electronic uh, edition. It's, a, it's about to be out, uh, probably, uh, probably uh, in the beginning of the next year we, we have it. But, an uh, English edition of Frutos English No Brazil. Edition, yeah, it's an uh, okay, iBook great. called iBook. It's sold. It's it's it's, it's uh, for uh, a portable uh, machine like this. E-book, or you mean on online book? No, not really. It's iBook. It's a iBook. new system. It's, it's only from Apple. iBook. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, it's like so it's not a printed hard copy. Of no, no, book. no. It's it's uh, because in English it's not profitable to to, to produce an uh, an English edition. Because uh, the sales is very low, mm -hmm. so the big market is the Brazilian market, the Portuguese books. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing is is this uh, iBook for Apple, uh, all Apple system. It doesn't work for Google, and it's it's it's, it's, pr it's ready, in fact. We just didn't put out because there was some small details that didn't have time to conclude. But it's already translated everything ready. But uh, because I think it covers most of the of the Brazilian uh, fruit that's. It's known from from science, or at least they are being cultivated in for some collectors. In fact, because uh, you know Amazon is just a mystery. No, nobody knows what's really in there. What fruits have you found? Uh, rare fruits that you think are exciting might have some commercial potential that people don't I, know about. Well, among the Brazilian species, I think the, this group of uh, of uh, of. Uh, Clusiaceae, uh, especially Garcinia, it's a big, large potential group for sure, because they are, they are, uh, uh, let's say, they are handily, uh, easily handled, uh, uh, contrary with the Myrtaceae family, because they, are, they cannot be, be uh, stored or packed, etc. But the, the, this, in the Clusiaceae group, I'm sure it's really a potential. It's the main, main one, I suppose, because Sapotaceae, there are lots of uh, spe uh, fruit, three species, but they are, uh, it's a type of fruit, they are usually big, but they are not very much uh, hand uh, you know, package, packageable, because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't last in uh, right. transport yeah. and everything. Post-harvest. Post-harvest. Yeah, post-harvest, handling. Uh, handling and the packaging system. So, the Clusiaceae, uh, I'm sure there are quite a bit of species with great potential. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about Brazilian species, of course. Are there any particular ones you can think of that stand out in your mind that have a really good commercial potential? Well, uh, I think the, 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 the Garcinia Oxaxairu, Garcinia humilis, is one of them, of course. It's very much potential. Garcinia uh, grandifolia is also... Um, you know, there's some Amazonian species very interesting. Of course, in this group, there are many, many species that are introduced that are very much interesting. But I'm talking about the Brazilian species. But this group, as a whole, is, is the most promising uh, group of, of fruit trees for commercial use in, the, uh, in general. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a question submitted by one of the people in the Tropical Fruit Forum. They want to know, is there a fruit that you have been looking for for a long time that you couldn't find, or maybe one that you found and then lost track of? Like legendary fruits, I guess. <laughs> well, I always wanted to find this Anona ambotai. Anona anonese is a group very big in Brazil. There are many, many species. In the Amazon, there are quite a bit of species. I always wanted to get this Anona ambotai. It's from uh, uh, Southern Amazon. But we never, uh, you know, I already found the tree, but I never were, were never able to, are never able to, is to be there when the fruits are, are, are nice, are, are ready or ripe. And also, the the Poteri speciosa from Amazon is also a very promising fruit that uh, was never able to to touch it, let's say. Mm -hmm. But, and what uh, they are really fantastic. Uh, I read about the information that's available. I talked with the local people about the quality of the fruit, and they, unfortunately, we were never able to be there in the right time. You've never tasted either one not of those. Not exactly not. Of course, we have many other anonese that I haven't uh, cited that, 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 that told you, but uh, that's a, a very promising group too. The, uh, the anonese, the anona spe specifically. Okay. Here's another one submitted by a forum member 
he, he wants to know, are there any stories about fruits that have been lost or ones that were lost and you're still trying to recuperate interesting stories? Well, <laughs> yeah, there's one from my, my, from my, from my, from my infant, infancy. Uh, when that was uh, growing in the southern part of Brazil, I know today which one it is, but I never found it again. It's a, it's a, I suppose it's a poteria. It's one of the most delicious things I ever tasted. Uh, we used to call uh, butter butter uh, ball. We used to call that because it's so delicious. Uh, so of course it was very very caloric pulp, but according to the, the what I remember from the, my, my infancy, uh, it was a um, uh, something that resembles what we know today from about the potarias, the, the, this group of, uh, of fruit. But I tasted many species, lots of more than 100 species, but I never found the one that tastes exactly like the one from my infancy. Uh, that's a mystery, because uh, probably this, this species was, was there, because it was the, 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 the end of the distribution, because it's very south, uh, in the south hemisphere. And uh, probably uh, it was the limit, the, uh, Aust the, the southern, uh, southerly limit. And uh, we found some others uh, farther north, but never tasted like that. So I suppose um, that's not the same species. But, uh, you know, it's harder to find one, one, one plant, one species uh, occurring in a single place. Uh, I'm sure it's part of a, a larger distribution that we and also probably I was I was a kid and they probably I, I imagine I imagining too much today and it wasn't that that delicious probably but for as a kid uh, rural uh, and from the rural area everything that is, is possible to taste usually usually looks very nice are you born and raised in this area yeah yeah exactly I was born and raised in an agricultural area in the southern part of Brazil in Santa Catarina and where we used to have this plant it wasn't cultivated, it was from the forest. It was left from the forest. And we, very, uh, every year we tasted the fruit, it's marvelous. So Were you interested in plants as a little boy or is this something that came later in life? No, for, in fact, they assisted very uh, as a kid because uh, I was raised inside of the forest. So I always have had um, very much interest in, in uh, in uh, knowing the names of the plant and how to identify them because the first contact with the plants in, in my life was uh, when I was seven years old and there was work with my father and my family to uh, cut uh, uh, logs in the forest and I always wanted to know uh, how the leaves look like because we always identified the plants by the, by the bark but uh, I was thinking that they should know how, it, how the leaves look like it. And when you eventually find some some fruit seeds, I always take home to plant in a, close to the house. So uh, I have some plants that are still there today. I'm almost 70, and I'm still there. Your father was also interested in gardening and agriculture, well, and horticulture. They are, they're agriculturists. They are, we are Italian descendant, and uh, when they came to, from, uh, from Italy, they established in this part of the, the country, and they are a rural uh, people, I see. agricultural people, small okay. agriculture. So, as a last question, um, how would you like to see this garden progress? What's your dream goal, or what would you like to see happen? Okay, uh, gardens are not uh, are never ready, ready uh, completed. We are always building new gardens. If you come over here month, one month from now, you see differences. But my ultimate goal if, is to transform, to change that big building over there that used to be part of the old industry that, that was here in the, before the, the garden. I wanted to change it into a big greenhouse for visitors. Because our greenhouses are not able to be, to, to be open to the public because they, 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 it's not allowed because of them, for mobility reasons. Uh, so you wanted to build this big building over there to change it into a greenhouse for visitors. You wanted to create, to have, to create a, and a, and a, 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 a rainforest atmosphere because the, the humidity in this area is very low. It's, it's most of the area is below 30% uh, humidity. 
and the, those plants that grow in rainforest that are not far from here, probably 50 kilometers in, in straight line, we are not able to grow. So we wanted to create this, this uh, greenhouse completely closed uh, with, uh, with humidity control in order to have always 100% uh, humidity or close to that to grow those plants. And uh, the, of course, it's not, uh, I'm not dreaming of something very fancy, glass house, but plastic, even plastic. So it's a big house. Uh, 30 by 30 meters, and uh, I think you, I can grow even big trees inside of. Uh, that's my ultimate goal because uh, uh, I'm really frustrated uh, not being able to grow some uh, tropical rainforest species over here. We basically grow here plants mm -hmm. from these uh, semi arid or some dry uh, place areas. Which species? In particular, you would like to grow that well, you like, can like the heliconias. Heliconias, we, 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 we are, they do very poorly. Only a few species can grow well here. But uh, uh, other than that, mainly those those epiphytes which you can't grow here because it's too dry here. Even though we have rain in the sun in the, in the, in the summer, but the humidity is always below 60 percent mm. most of the time. During the winter time, it's always below 30 percent. It can get as low as 12 percent. It's like a desert. So we can't grow epiphytes in, in, in our trees over here. So our main goal is really complete this greenhouse in the, in the next few years and grow all those plants that are very close from here, They're not far, as I told you, 50 kilometers in straight line, we are inside of the rainforest, but not here, we, we can't, we can't mm -hmm. grow. What about multiplying some of these rare plants? Do you sell any of these species in, your, in no, the garden? We, we don't sell plants, we donate no. plants, because we, uh, that's, that's a different business. Uh, we, we produce a lot of uh, seedlings over here, but for our own use, yeah, the leftover is, is donated. We plant in the streets and we keep some, uh, some streets and the uh, greens in the town mm -hmm. uh, to, to grow those, those plants. But uh, we don't sell it because that's a different structure. We don't have enough space for, for uh, displaying, for to, or, you know, to, to produce them, in fact, because our garden is for visitors, mainly. Okay, something that might excite people listening to this and maybe get you more visitors from the United States and Europe. What, what's your policy in terms of like people coming here and picking fruits and collecting seeds? A lot of gardens don't, don't allow that. No, what's your policy? No, we don't care about that. The only thing we, we orientate to people is not collecting in front of the others because, uh, you know, to not stimulate the people who are depredating, the, they destroy the garden. But uh, we donated, uh, we allowed, uh, you know, if somebody comes over here, they are free to collect everything. Uh, except, as I told you, in, in a very uh, frequent, uh, with, with days like Sunday and Saturday, when there are many uh, visitors, we just avoid then the, to collect in front of the, the visitors, just to, as a matter of, of, of organizing a disciplinary mm -hmm. situation. Well, I want to thank you very much for taking the time for the interview. You have a beautiful place. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I hope to have you here sometime. It's a great pleasure. We are, have an international airport 40 minutes from here. Yeah, I didn't and know about we, that. Yeah, we uh, will be a great pleasure to receive you. We, we eventually there, receive some, some groups from the uh, United thanks States. Thanks for mentioning that. I, I wanted to say because many of the people listening to this are from Florida and you said there's a direct flight from Florida, Orlando, Florida to Campinas? Campinas. Yeah, it's just 40 minutes from here. We can pick them up at the, in oh. the airport. airport in the How many hours is that flight? Uh, from the USA? It's yeah, just from, eight hours. From, eight hours from it's from Orlando? Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, and Miami, and also New York, I suppose. Oh, okay, and that's great. So Europe, I, of course. I hope more of you come here because it really is a fabulous place. Bring your whole family. Thank you very much.